Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this gun here. It's the Smith & Wesson M&P9, but not just any M&P9. This is a uh, sort of limited edition or limited uh, distribution version. This one is available through the uh, first responder, uh, law enforcement, military, whoever Smith & Wesson deems qualified to purchase these. So uh, a couple things that are going to separate it from your standard M&P9s is uh, the finish, which we'll get into here in a second, as well as the fact that it has all of the upgrades, the current upgrades, and we'll go over those as well here in a second to the trigger system and uh, other parts and pistols. So um, really, it's a gun that you may not see out there. However, it's just like all the other M&P9s, a gun that I really do recommend a lot. M&P pistols uh, have earned in the past few years a reputation for reliability, uh, durability at a very good price point. So what we're gonna do here is just talk about some of the features of it and then uh, basically what I think of it overall. get into some of the features of the gun I guess we'll start back here at the back strap it does have an interchangeable back strap system so it's fairly easy to change out and you can adjust the size of the swell here in the back this one here is the medium and on those back straps it has decent texturing um, it's sort of uh, I don't know it's not stippling at all but it does stick to your hand in a good bit and it is in the important places particularly up here on the front front strap uh, a lot of folks do stipple that up a little bit to add to the uh, texturing on there or add some you know aftermarket tape like grip uh, talon grip tapes or something like that but I find the texturing really to be pretty good and uh, not much of an issue I generally leave it as is especially on the full-size guns magazine comes with three 17 round magazines uh, very high quality magazines never had an issue with them uh, to speak of so you certainly can't complain about that good capacity there um, moving up our mag release here is reversible it's not ambidextrous but it is reversible for you left-handed shooters who want to swap it over up here on the trigger guard it's rounded a bit so some folks who like to have that sort of sharper edge to rest their finger on may not like that it's really a personal preference thing though so i don't really know that i can comment much more on that i don't do it so i'm not the expert there up front here we have the 1913 style rail and uh, you'll notice here on this model there are no external safeties which in my opinion is a good thing some folks out there simply don't feel comfortable with it though even on a striker fire gun so it's really personal preference at that point but um, it's a very smooth edge and carries well. The trigger on the gun is drastically improved over the early M&P pistols that we've reviewed here on the channel. So we'll get into that here. Uh, basically it has this little safety here on the trigger, meaning that you actually have to depress this lever to get that piece on the back to go up, which allows the actual upper piece of the trigger to move back. And um, basically as your uptake there and then you hit a wall here uh, initially the trigger is going to be a little bit gritty out of the box you can polish up your sear and uh, firing pin safety or striker safety rather um, or if you want you can just dry fire it or shoot it a bunch and it'll get to that point either way but once you get to your wall uh, depending on your gun again at first it's going to be a little bit gritty but the break really isn't that bad in my opinion you have some over travel there and here's where the huge improvement in the Smith & Wesson line has been uh, accomplished over the last few years. And this is this piece right here. An actual reset. I know, it's impressive on a Smith & Wesson M&P. So the reset, tactile and audible, and really the travel is relatively short. Now, I'm not saying this is as good as a BP-9 trigger, PPQ trigger, um, any of those. It's, it's not, but it's a dramatically improved trigger and is very serviceable on a service pistol it breaks right around five pounds and like i said after a few hundred rounds it's relatively crisp let's break this sucker down and get into some of the uh stuff on the inside that's been changed out um the slide lock is right here basically to uh take down the pistol you just want to lock the slide to the rear you're going to rotate this lever here and uh, at that point you can either hit the uh little takedown lever or sear disconnect if you will or you can just let it go home and pull the trigger, which is what we'll do here. And the slide will come forward. You can remove your guide rod. It's a stainless steel guide rod, so a lot of folks out there are gonna like that. And uh, remove your barrel, 
and your pistol is field stripped. Now that we've got it disassembled, let's take a look at some of these internals. You'll see here we do have our steeler inserts on the frame like we always have. However, a couple things are different. If you take a look right here on the uh, slide release, slide lock, you'll notice these sort of beefed up parts. And compared to some of the earlier ones, those bulges right there wouldn't be there on the earlier models. So what that does is it allows for a more crisp trigger reset. Because what it's actually doing here is pushing your trigger bar forward and uh, helps out with that reset. The sear as well has been slightly altered in terms of geometry to uh, help with the reset. So that's uh, certainly changes in the right direction in my opinion. The barrel is gonna be another big upgrade that's changed. Uh, initially, Smith & Wesson was using one in 10 twist barrels versus the, or correction, one in 18 twist barrels versus the current, which is this one, which is a one in 10 twist barrel. So uh, the reports, especially on the full size nine millimeter uh, MMPs that you saw of horrible accuracy coming out of the box, were true, uh, no getting around it. They grouped very poorly with a lot of different ammo. So Smith & Wesson changed it and went to a more common uh, twist rate, which is the one in 10 twist. And uh, it's been very accurate. Let's uh, check that out real quick. Every now and then we all get inspired by Hickok 45, I suppose. We got a target down range there at 50 meters. We have the uh, MMP9, which is uh, has the uh, new barrel in it. Some of the old barrels, for those of you guys that don't know, on the MMP9s had some accuracy issues. And uh, the new ones are much improved. So I'm sure the barrel on this gun is, by all means, capable of hitting these uh, targets down range. But whether or not I am is a whole other story. But let's step over here and see if we can actually make that steel ring a little bit. Better quit while I'm ahead. So uh, there you go. I suppose that's the proof, if you will, that the new MMP9 barrels are just fine in terms of accuracy. We were shooting just 115 grain uh, minute man munition stuff out of it, so nothing fancy. Um, and it seems to work just fine. It wasn't just the twist rate that helped out with the accuracy. Smith & Wesson also added this sort of a bulge up here on the front, which helps with the slide and barrel lockup. So that helped to make that a little bit tighter as well, which helped those groups tighten up subsequently. You'll notice here on the barrel that it is a dot barrel. Now the new ones either have one or two dot uh, to differentiate them them from the earlier ones. So if you're checking out your barrel and you don't have a dot, you may have one of the one in 18 twist ones. So check your groups and uh, see if it may be an issue for you. The slide finish is one of the bigger differences between uh, this and some of the other MNP models out there. This one here has got a PVD finish and uh, basically that's a vacuum type of finish where things are deposited on the surface of the metal and I'm sure some metallurgists will come along and explain it better than all of us can. But essentially, what does that mean to the end shooter? Well, it's a surface hardening treatment. I called Smith & Wesson. They told me, at least their customer service line did, that it gives the uh, finish a 75 Rockwell hardness, uh, which is extremely hard and durable. And uh, they said it's 99% corrosion resistant. I don't know how you quantify that, but that's what they told me. So <laughs> no getting around the, the Melanite finish, which I'm a huge fan of, as you guys know, who watch the channel regularly, is a very durable finish as well. You can take a look here. This is a uh, melanited finished version and uh, versus the PVD. And I think you can probably tell that melanite is a good bit shinier. The PVD appears dull. However, again, the surface treatment is what we're talking about there. So the actual uh, stainless steel slide underneath there is hardened, uh, which is really what's going to protect it from uh, wear and corrosion in the long term. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with it either way. You can see it is starting to wear just from some use here, but really um it's in my opinion kind of a flip a coin situation reassembling the pistol is just as easy as taking it apart just in reverse you're going to put your barrel back in you're going to put your uh, spring back in run your slide in the rails of your frame and we're just gonna lock slide to the rear rotate that up let it go home. If you did disassemble it by using the uh, sear disconnect in there, you're gonna need to insert a magazine to get it back into functioning order. But at that point, you just function test your pistol by pointing in a safe direction, hold the trigger to the rear and ensure it resets and uh, your pistol's reassembled. One of the great things about the M&P pistol line since it's become so prolific is that the accessories out there that are available for it are probably second only to Glock and maybe 1911s. I mean, these guns are everywhere. So companies are trying to make stuff to uh, accommodate that. You can see this holster here we have from um, Russian Roulette uh, clothing. Great holster, nice, uh, good uh, retention level in there, but there's holsters made for lights and other things. Uh, has a 1913 style rail, so any of your lights are gonna work on there. Here we have the uh, TLR1, great light. 
And then additionally, uh, Smith & Wesson is making a ton of different variants for it. So if you like this type of pistol, the variants are everywhere. Here we have our VTAC gun that we reviewed previously in the past. Awesome, awesome gun. Uh, has a lot of the same upgrades. Also has a different color, but PVD slide and some interesting sights. Check out that review if you guys want to see that one, but an excellent gun as well. And uh, Smith & Wesson uh, this year released their core lineup. Uh, Combat Optics Ready, I believe. I think it actually says it on the side, but um, it allows for direct mounting of uh, red dot type optics to the slide. The slide comes pre-milled. It's got some nice stippling here on the back strap and uh, the nice raised up suppressor ready sights. So uh, that's another excellent option out there in the M&P lineup. But uh, the basic gun, just like this one, is great. But there's accessories out there for it everywhere, and uh, there's different models available for folks with different tastes. I think I hit all the details outside of price, and that's sort of going to depend on who you actually are as the purchaser. So uh, this being the law enforcement model or first responder model, whatever you want to call it, is limited in terms of who Smith & Wesson sells it to and distributes it through. So all their law enforcement military dealers, generally speaking, will carry this particular model. Uh, that said, those of you who do not qualify for that, um, don't despair. They're out there. They're all over Gun Broker. If you take a look at Gun Broker, at least as of this morning when I checked it, they were out there. For the law enforcement folks, the price on this one is going to come to market right at $399, which is crazy. Uh, very, very good price for the quality of gun you get, including the night sights and all the current upgrades that we just talked about. Uh, for those of you who are not uh, in the law enforcement or military or first responder or whatever the case may be category, um, this gun is generally, at least on Gun Broker, which is really the only place I've seen it uh, outside of those uh, law enforcement dealers, is going to come right around $500. So even at that price point, it's a very good gun. Uh, the M&P is a proven design over the last few years. Yes, it's had some problems you know, here and there like every design has, but uh, I really think they've perfected it, or I don't know what perfected it, but really resolved all those issues uh, to make it where it's an excellent all-around choice. If you guys uh, have any questions about this, though, that I didn't cover here in the video, feel free to post below in the comment section, as always. If uh, you can post over in the comment section, or you can also post over on my Facebook page. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.